Hello, everyone today, I got a few dirty jokes for you, so let's start it. Number one, a guy walks into a bar and notices a sign that says, make me laugh and get a free drink. He's feeling confident, so he saunters up to the bartender and says, all right, I've got a joke that's gonna get me that free drink. The bartender with a knowing smile replies, let's hear it. The guy begins. So a guy walks into a fancy restaurant and looks at the menu. He sees a dish called on the beach and thinks, well, that's quite a name for a meal. The bartender chuckles and nods. Sounds interesting so far. The guy continues. He asks the waiter, what's this is on the beach dish all about? The waiter grins and says, it's our specialty, very popular, very exotic. The customer says, I'm intrigued. I'll give it a shot. A few minutes later, the waiter returns with a beautiful, elaborate dish. The guy takes one look at it and says, wow, this looks amazing. But tell me, what's the story behind the name? The waiter leans in and says, oh, the name? It's just to make it memorable. You see, we've also got the fantastic fries and the cat pizza on the menu. The guy laughs and says, that's quite a lineup. But honestly, how do you come up with these names? The waiter winks and says, well, we like to keep things spicy and fun. It's all about creating an experience. Plus, it makes for some great stories. The guy finishes his meal, turns to the waiter and says, you know, this was fantastic. But I've got to ask, what about dessert? The waiter smirks and says, for dessert, we've got the cheeky chocolate sundaes and the naughty noggin. The guy grins and says, I'm not sure I'm ready for that level of commitment. As the night goes on, the guy starts to get a bit tipsy and decides to ask the bartender, so what do you call the bill at the end of the night? The bartender chuckles and says, oh, we call that the price of pleasure. It's our way of keeping the fun rolling until the very end. The guy laughs, pays his bill and says, well, tonight was worth every cent of that price of pleasure. I'll definitely be back for more of your memorable menu items. <laughs> Number two, a black boy walks into the kitchen where his mother is baking and accidentally pulls the flour over onto his head. He turns to his mother and says, look, mama, I'm a white boy. His mother smacks him and says, go tell your daddy what you just said. The boy finds his father and says, look, daddy, I'm a white boy. His daddy bends him over, spanks him, stands the boy back up and says, now, what do you have to say for yourself? The boy replies, I've only been a white boy for five minutes, and I already hate you black people. <laughs> Number three on a transatlantic flight, a plane passes through a severe storm. The turbulence is awful, and things go from bad to worse when one wing is struck by lightning. One woman, in particular, loses it. Screaming, she stands up in the front of the plane. I'm too young to die. I want my last minutes on Earth to be memorable. I've had plenty of in my life, but no one has ever made me really feel like a woman. Well, I've had it. Is there anyone on this plane who can make me feel like a woman? For a moment, there is silence. Everyone has forgotten their own peril, and they all stare, riveted, at the desperate woman in the front of the plane. Then, a man stands up in the rear of the plane. I can make you feel like a woman, he says. He's drop-dead gorgeous. Tall, built, with flowing black hair and jet black eyes, he starts to walk slowly up the aisle, unbuttoning his shirt one button at a time. No one moves. The woman is breathing heavily in anticipation as the strange man approaches. He removes his shirt. Muscles ripple across his chest as he reaches her and extends the arm holding his shirt to the trembling woman and whispers, here, iron this. <laughs> Number four, every day, Johnny walks by the same group of on his way to school. Every day, they say hello and wave their pinky fingers at him. One day, Johnny stops and asks, why do you always wave your pinky fingers at me? One replies, because that's how big we think your is. The next day, as he's walking to school, and the women say hello, waving their pinkies. Johnny turns to them, puts his fingers in his mouth and stretches it as wide as it will go, while saying, hi, ladies. <laughs> Number five, a man goes to a and walks up to the clerk at the front desk. The man says, I would like to buy some entertainment for the night. The clerk replies, I would recommend Jessica. She has won the three RD floor, room seven. She is $250 for the night. The man replies, that's outrageous. I can't pay that. The clerk then suggests Vanessa on the two end floor. He tells the man that she is $150 for the night. The man says, listen, 
I have $60. That's all I can pay. The clerk says, go down the left hallway here, and she will be in the last door to the left. The man pays and goes to the room. The girl is there and already on the cover. She is extremely hot. He rips his pants off and starts going to town. About a 10 seconds in, she starts foaming at the mouth and her eyes roll up. The man screams and runs out to the clerk. He tells him what happened. The clerk immediately grabs the phone and makes a call. He says, yeah, Tony, the dead one's full again. <laughs> Number six reporter. Excuse me, may I interview you? Man, yes. Reporter, name, man, John Reporter, man, three to five times a week. Reporter, no, no. I mean, male or female, man, yes, male, female, sometimes camel. Reporter, holy cow. Man, yes, cow, sheep, animals in general. Reporter, but isn't that hostile? Man, yes, horse style, dog style, any style. Reporter, oh dear. Man, no, no deer. Deer run too fast. Hard to catch. <laughs> Number seven, a man was having premature problems, so he went to the doctor. The doctor said, when you feel like you're getting ready to try startling yourself. That same day, the man went to the store and bought himself a starter pistol and ran home to his wife. That night, the two were having and found themselves in the 69 position. The man felt the urge to and fired the starter pistol. The next day, he went back to the doctor who asked how it went. The man answered, not well. When I fired the pistol, my wife pooped on my face, bit three inches off my and my neighbor came out of the closet with his hands in the air. <laughs> Number eight, it was Christmas Eve. A woman came home to her husband after a day of busy shopping. Later on that night when she was getting undressed for bed, he noticed a mark on the inside of her leg. What is that? He asked. She said, I visited the tattoo parlor today. On the inside of one leg, I had them tattoo Merry Christmas, and on the inside of the other one, they tattooed Happy New Year. Perplexed, he asked, why did you do that? Well, she replied, now you can't complain that there's never anything to eat between Christmas and New Year's? <laughs> Number nine, a guy decides to do something nice for his girlfriend before they leave on vacation, so he gets her name tattooed on his he comes home and shows it to her. She looks at it and says, that's great, sweetie. But what is he tells her to rub it? And as she does, she sees it actually reads Wendy. When they arrive at Montego Bay, the couple are walking along a beach and the boyfriend notices a black guy with Y on his He asks the man if he also has a girlfriend named Wendy. The black guy laughs and says, nah, man. Mine says, welcome to Jamaica, have a nice day. <laughs> Number 10, three brothers are traveling along a road and their car dies. They all get out of the car and start walking to a barn that's a little ways away. When they get there, the farmer comes out of the barn and offers them a room for one night. He says to the first one, you can sleep with the pigs, the second guy, you can sleep with the cows, and the third guy, I like the cut of your jib. You can sleep with my 18 daughters. The next morning, he asks everyone how they slept. The first man said, I slept like a pig. The second man said, I slept like a cow. The third guy said, I slept like a rabbit. I jumped from hole to hole to hole. <laughs> Number 11, a farm boy who had just finished his schooling on the farm was sent by his mom P to the big city to go to college. The first thing the boy does when he gets to town is go to find a He goes inside to talk to the madam about getting a girl. She leads him upstairs, opens the door to a room, and tells him to sit and wait for the girl to arrive. After several minutes of anxious waiting, a young, blonde comes in. The boy is beside himself, and he leaps up from the bed, grabs the television, and throws it out the window. The girl thinks this is odd behavior, but she shrugs it off and begins to undress. As she strips, the farm boy runs over, grabs the nightstand, and throws it out the window. Again, the girl thinks this is odd, but being an experienced she figures it's a fetish and continues disrobing. The girl removes her and with that, the farm boy grabs the entire bed and starts lugging it toward the window. The girl, figuring this is one even she hasn't heard of, finally asks, what the hell are you doing? The farm boy replies, ah, uh, ain't never been with no woman before, but if it's anything like sheep, we gonna need all the room we can get. Number 12, the two old coots were both only a year short of retirement from the assembly line. But one Monday morning, 
that didn't keep Joe from boasting to Manny about his endurance. Three times, gasped Manny admiringly. How'd you do it? It was easy. Joe looked down modestly. I made love to my wife, and then I rolled over and took a 10-minute nap. When I woke up again, I made love to her again and took another 10-minute nap. And then I put it to her again. Can you believe it? I woke up this morning feeling like a bull, I'll tell you. I gotta try it, said Manny. Lorraine won't believe it's happening. So that night he made love to his wife, took a 10-minute nap, made love to her again, took another nap, woke up, and made love to her a third time, then rolled over and fell sound asleep. He woke up feeling like a million bucks, pulled on his clothes, and ran to the factory, where he found his boss waiting outside for him. What's up, boss? He asked. I've been working for you for 20 years and never been late once. You aren't going to hold these 20 minutes against me now, are you? What 20 minutes? Growled the boss. Where were you on Tuesday and Wednesday? <laughs> Number 13, a guy and girl had poem competition. Guy, two times two is four. Four plus five is nine. I can put mine in yours, but you can't put yours in mine. Girl, two times two is four, four plus five is nine. I know the length of yours, but you won't know the depth of mine. <laughs> Number 14 on a senior citizen's bus tour. While the passengers were unloading to do some sightseeing, one elderly lady stopped and whispered in the driver's ear. She said, driver, I believe that I was harassed. The driver didn't think much of her complaint, but promised he would check into it soon. Later, that same day, as the passengers were unloading again, a second little old lady bent down and whispered in his ear, Sir, I believe I was harassed. This time, he figured he'd better look into it. A few passengers had remained on the bus, and he decided to go back and question them to find out if they knew what was going on. He found one little old man crawling along the bus floor beneath the seats and stooped down to question him. Excuse me, sir, could I help you? The elderly man looked up and said, well, Sonny, you sure can. I've lost my 2P, and I'm trying to find it. The man continued, I thought I'd located it twice, but they were parted in the middle, and mine is parted on the side. <laughs> Number 15, there's some soldiers in Vietnam, and they've been pinned down in their trench for days. Finally, one guy says, this, I really have to pee, guys. Lay down covering fire, I'll run into the bushes. When I'm done, I'll give a signal and you can give me covering fire while I run back. So they lay down fire and he runs off into the jungle. But he's gone for a good half an hour. They're finally convinced that he's been murdered by Charlie when they hear the signal. So they lay down fire and he sprints out of the jungle and leaps back into the trench. So obviously they're pretty confused. They ask what the hell took you so long, man? The guy says, well, I was just finishing up my business when I met this beautiful Vietnamese girl, and we just started having s right there. We did every position imaginable. Missionary, doggy style, everything. It was great. One of his buddies asks, well, did you get any head? He replies, there was no head. <laughs> Number 16, a woman is having a hard time getting her tomatoes to ripen, so she goes to her neighbor with her problem. The neighbor says, all you have to do is go out at midnight and dance around in the garden for a few minutes, and the tomatoes will become so embarrassed they will blush bright red. The woman goes out at midnight and dances around her garden for a few minutes. The next morning, the neighbor comes over to the woman's house and asks the woman if her tomatoes have turned red. The woman says, no, they're still green, but I noticed the cucumbers grew four inches. <laughs> Number 17. There is a fellow who is talking to his buddy and says, I don't know what to get my wife for her birthday. She has everything, and besides, she can afford to buy anything she wants. I'm stumped. His buddy says, I have an idea. Why don't you make up a certificate that says she can have two hours of great <laughs> any way she wants it? She'll probably be thrilled. The first fellow does just that. The next day, his buddy asks, well, did you take my suggestion? How did it turn out? She loved it. She jumped up, thanked me, kissed me on the mouth, and ran out the door yelling, I'll see you in two hours. <laughs> Number 18, Daddy, where did I come from? Seven-year-old Rachel asks. It is a moment for which her parents have carefully prepared. 
They take her into the living room, get out several other books, and explain all they think she should know about attraction, affection, love, and reproduction. Then they both sit back and smile contentedly. Does that answer your question? The mom asks. Not really, the little girl says. Judy said she came from Detroit. I want to know where I came from. <laughs> Guys, these are few dirty jokes for you today. Hope so you enjoy. Subscribe to our channel for more videos until then we see you in the next video goodbye.